Two-Ton Porcupine, L4 Studios, White Wizard Games, come together to bring a new super tabletop adventure to all of us. And that title? Kapow! Superhero or supervillain, you decide in this buildable dice game. Your customizable dice pool is used to execute a variety of superpowers. Gain special abilities and new play experiences by taking on the role of six different playable heroes and villains. In Kapow, players go head-to-head -head in a classic explosive clash of good versus evil. You choose to be a villain or hero, which determines your starting trait dice and unique abilities. You can gain additional blank action dice that have removable faces that you customize to your liking to best enhance your character. Behind a player screen, you will roll and allocate them to attack, defense, and to power up abilities. The combination of choosing how to grow your own dice pool, how to customize your dice faces, and how to use each roll leads to a satisfying and strategic showdown. With two copies of the game and the dual board Sawmill Jackson expansion, you can play with three to four players in a game with a two on two, two heroes, two villains, or two versus one, two heroes versus one mega villain. Kapow is a two player game for ages eight and up and will take 20 to 60 minutes. <clears throat> I do like that publisher blurb. It definitely caught my attention. Enough that I looked into this game a little bit more. Now, I realize that if you do have the a second copy of the game or the expansion, you can play with up to four players. That's cool. I definitely like that. And I like the fact that the base game, the core game, is a two-player game. There's not a lot of games out there that are specifically and only designed, really, for two players. Now, this has a very unique feel to its comic book world. Very unique because it's not based... It's not based on anything that's uh, established, uh, franchise-wise, such as Marvel or DC. They decided to create their own heroes, their own world, their own backstory. Now, that takes a lot. It takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of effort. I definitely give them props for doing that. Especially in a field where if it's not a franchise IP, people don't always tend to look at it. And that's the way it is with superheroes and comic books. So that's another another thing I really respect that they did, that they chose to do this all, literally all, on their own. Now, another thing that caught my attention on this, my friends. <laughs> you get to play as a hero, yes, but you can also choose to play as the villain. That's something else I find very, very fun. There are there are a few games out there, I have a handful, where you, you play the other side, so to speak. You play a game where you're the bad guys and not the good guys. But there's definitely not enough, and there's far fewer in the superhero genre, in the superhero field of board games, I think, than in others. So that definitely was a draw to me. Now this whole thing about the, the buildable action dice, this caught my attention, because it's going to allow you to control the odds. Well, at least more so than normal. Because you're building the dice. So if you want more of one symbol, uh, like attack or defense, then as you're building the die, you will put more of those faces on it. Therefore, you <laughs> are controlling the odds to a degree. And that is something else. I've seen that in a couple of games. I don't own any games where you snap the dice together and put the faces on it. But it is it is an idea. It is a, a, a game mechanism that I am highly curious about and to see that in in this a brand new superhero game a comic book game i'm really liking this idea and the idea that you can expand the number of players isn't new at all it, it, it's almost fairly common i would say that an expansion will add a fifth player let's say to the game so having having an expansion or the ability to just buy a second copy of the game uh in order to to put more players into the game up to four which is usually considered standard in the field to have a minimum of four players that is a really nice bonus to add on to the game so if you and your buddy really do love this game a lot you have the option to be able to bring in more players the art in this game 
is perfect for a comic book feel. Everything about it, every, every bit of line, every bit of color, every bit of design, in the way the characters, the heroes, the villains look, just scream comic book. There's no doubt in your mind that you're, that you're not looking at a comic book or something inspired by a comic book, something that is directly related to the field of comics and comic art. This, they went out of their way, and they needed to. They needed to, because comic book superhero art has a look, has a feel to it, no matter who the artist is, that is going to suck you into the pages. And they, they accomplished that. From everything I've seen, they have definitely accomplished that with their art. So in closing, if you are looking for a new superhero board game, if you are looking for a new, unique way to roll your dice and create, build your own dice, or something that's just good for a head-to-head, -head, a head-to-head -head game that'll take 30 to under 60 minutes, you need to go out and look up more information on Kapow, because this might be a new game that you're going to want for your shelf.